When you hear the words Kama Sutra, the first thing that probably comes to mind is sex. But did you know there is so much more contained within the pages of this erotic manuscript? In the Kama Sutra, you can find out how to kiss properly, how to get someone to marry you, and even the best ways to commit adultery. We'll be talking about the Congress of the Cow sex position and how to do it later on. But before we dive into that, it's important to understand where the Kama Sutra came from. Kama Sutra translates to Principles of Lust and is an ancient Indian text. It was first written in Sanskrit sometime between 400 BCE and 225 CE. The book itself contains a lot of descriptions of eroticism, pleasure, and sexual positions, but there's also so much more contained within its pages, some of which will really surprise you. Most scholars believe the Kama Sutra was written by Vatsyayana, who was an ancient Indian philosopher. In the book, Vatsyayana discusses everything from how men and women should act in society to how to please your partner. The Kama Sutra was a progressive book even by today's standards. It covers same-sex relationships, having multiple sex partners, and even discusses how women should have rights that at the time were not always adhered to. That being said, the Kama Sutra was most definitely not about equality for men and women. It only contains suggestions on how to live a happy and pleasurable life. Although most of the information in the text is geared toward men, soon we'll be talking about the splitting of a bamboo, which, believe it or not, is the sex position. But first let's find out what else is contained within this nifty book. The goal of the Kama Sutra is to help the reader live a life of fulfillment, so it provides advice on how to get married and stay married. Since both the husband and wife may not feel fulfilled in their marriage at certain points, the Kama Sutra also explains the best ways for each partner to have an affair. Worry not though, the book also talks about how to successfully end an affair as well. Vatsyayana describes hundreds of ways and strategies for people to have affairs. He also wrote about how and where to find prostitutes. There are different strategies written in the Kama Sutra to find the type of person you're looking to have an affair with. To be fair, at the end of the adultery section, Vatsyayana does warn the reader not to actually commit adultery if it can be prevented. Vatsyayana contradicts ancient traditions and texts when he wrote the Kama Sutra. In particular, he stated that cruel punishment for women who commit adultery should not occur. The book provides a way that a woman can end an affair and return to a passionate relationship with her husband without causing anyone harm. This probably was and still is a very useful tool for people who find themselves in adulterous situations. Although the Kama Sutra is a guide for males in many aspects of society, it does talk about how women should act to attract a male. It also discusses certain roles that women should have in society. The Kama Sutra provides verses on sexual freedom of females which at the time in Europe and until recently was never discussed. In a way, the Kama Sutra was way ahead of its time in normalizing sex and not seeing it as a taboo part of society. It's crazy to think about how progressive the Kama Sutra was. Even today, sex and passion is not often talked about except in the most secretive of ways. Yet, the Kama Sutra normalized the discussions around sex, lust, life, and passion. For example, there are even sections of the Kama Sutra that discuss homosexuality and bisexuality. Unfortunately, in some parts of the world even today, people are persecuted because of the people they love and engage in intimate relations with. The Kama Sutra was a text that gave people sexual freedom and non-judgmental views on same-sex intimacy. It even encouraged people to have multiple partners at the same time in certain situations. Just to be clear, the Kama Sutra was not written specifically to be a progressive manuscript on sexuality and passion, but instead served as a way to help people understand that intimacy between partners can come in all different forms. No one should be judged for wanting to seek a happy and fulfilling life with someone of the opposite sex or the same sex. The Kama Sutra is not perfect, though, as many parts explain ways that men can manipulate women. So take each section with a grain of salt. We're about to really get into the good stuff. But before we do, let's examine the layout of the book. We've talked about some key points discussed by Vatsayana in the Kama Sutra, but what else is there in this magnificent book? The Kama Sutra itself is technically seven books made up of 1250 verses, which are broken into 36 chapters. The first book contains the history of Kama literature along with who should read the Kama Sutra. It also talks about the suitable age for people to learn about the contents of the book. The end of the first book is focused on the gentlemen, in particular how they should behave, work, and other things of interest in society, such as socialization, games, entertainment, and drinking parties. It is here where Vatsayana goes into adultery, finding sexual partners and types of women, especially those who are forbidden and to be avoided. In the second book, things get a little more promiscuous. It talks about the different sexual relationships and the pleasures of sex. This includes foreplay and the types of climaxes. There are also extremely helpful sections of this book, such as how to figure out if someone is interested in you and how and where to kiss your partner. Interestingly, Vatsyayana goes on to hygiene and cleanliness in this book. 
This actually makes sense, since when you're kissing everywhere on your partner's body, you would want them to smell nice and be clean. The second book also discusses the not-so-obvious ways to pleasure your partner such as scratching, poking, biting, slapping, and holding. We'll come back to book two in a little, while as the end of this book in the Kama Sutra is where we find the sex positions. One we can't wait to tell you about is the turning position. Imagine a helicopter propeller spinning round and round. That's kind of what this Kama Sutra sex move is like. Book three of the Kama Sutra is about marriage. In particular, this book starts with how to find a wife and who to avoid. Then it discusses how to earn her trust and start moving slowly towards sexual relations. The end of the third book in the Kama Sutra focuses on how females can identify a man's advances, earn his trust, and eventually win his heart. Again, the books of the Kama Sutra contain a lot of knowledge than just crazy sex positions. Maybe it should even be the next book you read. Book 4 discusses the duties and privileges of a wife once two people are married. It also talks about how it's okay for a widowed woman to be married, join a harem, or join a polyamorous relationship. Book 5 is a little more taboo as it's about the human tendencies of men and women to cheat on one another. Often this is attributed to losing interest in your spouse and therefore, the different sexual positions and pleasuring techniques are vital to keeping a relationship fresh. But then again, it doesn't work for everyone. So Book 5 also goes more in-depth on how to have a successful affair such as deploying messengers and go-betweens, arranging meetings, and finding out if your adulterous partner is interested in you. This book also tells you when and how to stop an affair. The ending of the Kama Sutra consists of books 6 and 7, which are basically about prostitutes and how to make yourself feel and look good during the course of your life. Both things are important, but it's time to get to the good stuff. Let's take a look at some of the craziest sex positions from the Kama Sutra. I'd be lying if I said researching information about the Kama Sutra for the video wasn't a little fun. Many of the positions in the book I had never heard of before, and I am sure you will find one or two sexual positions surprising as well. Just remember, before trying something new, you and your partner should probably stretch. So we're clear, we're going to be saying penis, vagina, and sex a lot in this next part. If you're listening to this at work, maybe put some headphones on. We'll start with a variant on a more normal position called the variant yawning position. This is basically where a woman lays on her back and puts her legs as far toward her head as possible, allows the penis to enter the vagina fully, and is supposed to give intense pleasure to both partners. The variant yawning position is basically the missionary position with the legs high in the air allowing for maximum penetration. Next, we have the pressed position. Again, the woman's on her back, except this time she puts both her feet on the man's chest, basically like she's about to push him away with both legs. This is supposed to allow for deep penetration, but for women it could also be a useful position if their partner is not doing something right. All the female needs to do is extend both legs and she'll kick the man right off the bed. Now we've gotten to the splitting of a bamboo. This name might not sound like the most pleasurable sex position, but the Kama Sutra assures us it is safe. For this position, start in the missionary position, then the female places one leg on the shoulder of the man. After a little time, she switches legs. The sequence is done over and over again to cause the vagina to squeeze the penis in different ways. The switching of legs also apparently is reminiscent of the motion used to split bamboo. Who knew? The last three positions we're going to discuss from the Kama Sutra are the wildest. The first is the lotus-like position. If you've ever done yoga, you might know the lotus pose as folding the legs onto one another to sit cross-legged. Well, the sex position is just that. The woman crosses her legs in the lotus position and then has sex in that position while lying on her back. The congress of a cow position has a funny name, but it also comes with a deep symbolic meaning. Basically, this position is meant to represent two cows having sex. Both partners stand upright, and the female bends all the way over and places her hands on the floor in front of her. Her partner mounts her like a bull with a cow. It is pleasurable and symbolic at the same time. The final position we'll mention from the Kama Sutra is the turning position. Remember earlier when we mentioned the helicopter propeller spinning? This is exactly what the sex position is like. The female lays on her back and sex begins in the missionary position, then the male slowly turns around in a circle, keeping his body straight and his penis within the vagina. With enough practice, the man can make a 360 degree turn and eventually end up right back where he started. The Kama Sutra is much more than just crazy sex positions and erotica. It contains useful information for both males and females of the time. Some of the information is even relevant today. Yes, the unique sex positions are fun and the advice on how to commit adultery might be useful to some, but the real message within the Kama Sutra is how to live a happy and fulfilling life. Now watch what exactly is an orgasm or check out how do countries around the world make love.